The U.S. rifle, caliber 30 M1, commonly known as the Garand, is not only a dependable weapon, it also has a terrific wallop, better known as firepower. In fact, one man firing a Garand can do nearly as much damage as three men using the old type Springfield rifle with its hand-operated bolt. Now, to understand the reason behind this increased firepower, you have to know how the Garand operates. So let's take it step by step. The M1 is a semi-automatic, gas-operated and air-cooled weapon. It's fed from a clip which holds eight rounds. And only a fraction of a second after the trigger is pressed, a bullet is on its way. In this fraction of a second, many important steps occur. We'll take a few minutes and show you. So let's begin by loading a fresh clip and using an animated diagram. This shows what happens when the clip is inserted. The bottom cartridge forces the follower down. The follower arm moves and its heel rotates the accelerator, camming the operating rod catch down. We'll now add the operating rod, spring, and bolt to the diagram. Notice that the bolt is held to the rear by the operating rod, and the rod is held by its catch. Now watch the accelerator as the follower moves down. It rotates, camming the operating rod catch down. When the catch disengages, the rod starts forward, pushed by its compressed spring, and carries the bolt with it. Take a closer look at the bolt. As it moves forward, a cartridge is stripped from the clip and guided into the chamber by the feed ramp. When the cartridge is nearly seated, the bolt begins to lock. Watch how the cam surfaces in the operating rod handle act on the operating lug and rotate the bolt into the locked position once more. Here's the same action on the rifle itself. Now as the bolt locks, the extractor snaps into the extractor groove and the ejector is forced into the face of the bolt, compressing the ejector spring. Remember that this happens as the bolt is locking. Let's stop here a minute Remove the barrel and receiver from the stock and take a look at what's happening at the rear of the bolt as it locks. Here we are. Now watch the firing pin tang line up with a cutout slot in the receiver bridge when the bolt rotates. Here's the complete action of locking. Now that the bolt is locked, we're ready to fire. The hammer was cocked and placed in this position when we opened the breech to load the clips. When the trigger is pressed, the trigger lugs rotate and the hammer hooks are released. The hammer spring forces the hammer forward. Before we fire, here's another point, a safety point in case the bolt is not locked. The bolt camming lug on the left side of the hammer engages in this cutaway portion on the bolt. If the bolt is not completely locked, either the lug will cam it into lock position or the hammer will not strike the firing pin tang. So much for the safety feature. Now back to the hammer again. The lug engages the cutaway portion of the bolt and the hammer strikes the firing pin tang, driving the firing pin through the face of the bolt and igniting the round. The bullet travels along the barrel. Part of the exploding gases escape into the gas cylinder through the gas port. And this gas pressure drives the piston and operating rod back. The operating rod moves back about 5 sixteenths of an inch before it hits the operating lug. In other words, the projector leaves the muzzle before unlocking begins.
then the cam surface in the rod handle hits the operating lug. The bolt turns, unlocking the lugs from the receiver. Watch it again. The left operating lug cams against a small surface in the receiver, withdraws the bolt slightly, and breaks the cartridge case loose. This is called initial slow extraction. At the same time, the bolt camming lug is cammed out of its notch and forces the hammer away from the firing pin tang. This allows the firing pin tang to cam against this surface on the receiver bridge, withdrawing the firing pin from the bolt face. Here is the same action on the rifle. Now the complete action. The bolt then is free to move on and the operating rod continues back with the bolt, compressing the operating rod spring. As the bolt moves back, the extractor withdraws the empty cartridge case. As the neck of the case clears the breech, the ejector jumps forward, pushed by its spring. The case pivots about the extractor and up and out of the receiver. Here's the same thing in animation. Now, as the bolt moves to the rear, it forces the hammer back, which compresses the hammer spring. There, the bolt is back, and the hammer is caught by the sear. But look at it again. Notice that the trigger is still all the way back, after the hammer is caught by the sear. The reason is that the hammer is back before the finger can release the trigger. Watch this action in slow motion. Now we let the trigger forward. It frees the sear from the hammer, which starts forward. But it is caught by the trigger lug. Watch it once more. Let's take a look at the same action on the rifle itself. Here's the trigger mechanism. Watch the hammer move up and catch on the trigger lug as the trigger is released. It's a very slight movement. Now, as the bolt reached its rear position, the magazine was uncovered allowing the empty case to be ejected. We use the diagram and take the bolt to the rear again. Notice the follower move up, pushed by the follower arm, rod, and spring. It pushes the next cartridge up into feeding position. Now counter recoil starts. The operating rod spring expands. The rod moves forward, pulling the bolt. The bolt strips a fresh cartridge from the magazine and seats it in the chamber. The bolt locks and we're ready to fire again. The rifle will fire each time the trigger is pressed until the magazine is empty.